the new version of SPSS also allows you to carry out meta-analysis. It's been added actually to the top of the analyze functions, so even ahead of uh, reports, descriptive statistics and uh, all the other functions that we're used to using. Now, if you look at meta-analysis, you can do continuous outcomes, which is like the hippocampus uh, data or binary outcomes, which is ill or not ill, so counting the number of people who've been affected or not. So first thing we need to do is read in uh, the data set. So we need to import some data. It's a CSV uh, data file. So we're going to import the total hippocampus one. So the first line contains the variable names. That's all fine. That's all good. Press OK. So I've got the data in. Uh, NE happens to be a special protected character, so you can't actually uh, call it that. Um, you have to put an at symbol in front of it. So we've got the study names, the years, the mean of the experimental standard deviation of the experimental number and the experimental group, mean for the control, standard deviation for the control, number for the control. So if I now go into meta-analysis, it's a continuous uh, outcome, and I have the raw data. I haven't calculated the effect size already, so I haven't calculate the, calculated the mean differences between the two groups already. So now I have to define which things are which things. So I put the treatment group. So this is the experimental. So the study side size for the uh, treatment group is ME, the mean for the treatment group is ME, standard deviation for the treatment group is SE, the study size for the control group is NC, the study uh, mean for the control group is MC, and the standard deviation is SC. The study ID is labeled study, and there's no other particular label. Now I can calculate the effects using multiple different uh, measures. Probably the best is just to stick with Cohen's D because it's the easiest one to understand. So let's leave it on uh, Cohen's D for effect size. So we'll look at the criteria, 95% confidence interval, that's fine. And we can look at what analysis we want to do. Do you want to do any subgroup analysis by a year? No, you don't. You could do that if you had a lot of data for multiple years, you could break it down by subgroup. So now let's look at the plots that you can do. You can do a forest plot, a bubble plot, a funnel plot, and a Galbraith plot. So first thing we want to do is do a forest plot. Now what do you wish to display in your output? Uh, probably confidence interval limits, uh, the weighting, and the effect size. You want to look at the heterogeneity of the data and the test for the heterogeneity of the data. And that's about it. So let's go continue and press OK. So it carries out the meta-analysis, tells you what you've done, tells you the effect size and its confidence interval, and then displays this particular version of the forest plot, which you can then save and export if you want to. Zero is the no effect line. This is the diamond showing you the overall effect. And these are the boxes for each of the studies. And here's the text and summary of the studies with Cohen's D and the lower and upper uh, confidence interval for the things and the weights for each of the studies. You can see that the weights of each of the studies are about equal, so there's not a lot of heterogeneity in uh, the data. You've got your I squared. It's 0.52, which is a bit different to the value that was calculated before in uh, open meta analyst. Anyway, 
there's your plot. I'm just seeing that. Oop, I can edit that so I can resize elements. Because personally, I find these fonts are a bit too small. Uh, so I prefer them to be bigger and clearer. I'm not particularly keen on that uh, font choice. But anyway. They've picked particular things. I'll cross that back down. Um, now, if I go back to analyze, meta analysis, continuous outcomes, raw data. So that was the first one. Now I could have done the funnel plot as well. So if I click on funnel plot, uh, the y axis is the standard error. I want to label the things by the study name and I'm going to go continue. So now when I go OK, I will get two things as I output. I'll get the forest plot and the funnel plot. So you can see each of them uh, labeled down here. You can see confidence intervals you can find that hedges sits outside the confidence intervals so that's saying there's no actual effect in that particular study most of them are towards the top of the funnel and they're evenly uh, split on both sides of the central line of the funnel so that would suggest that you haven't got any bias in the way the data has been collected in the literature. You have no bias towards ignoring studies that either exaggerate the effect of post-traumatic stress disorder on hippocampus or ignore uh, small effects. So you think that you've got a representative set of data because it's evenly spread across the funnels. In meta-analysis, there were some other plots that you can put on. Uh, so there's the bubble plot. So I can click on that. Uh, label still with studies. And the gal oops, a predictor is required. So mean experimental. Well, I want actually the different difference between the two. Okay. What if I put in two of these? So the mean of the experimental and the mean of the control. Let's see if that works in that plot. And the Galbraith plot. And label again by the studies. Continue. Okay. Right. So forest plot. Here's the bubble plot. Primary studies, so the meta-analysis regression line. So this is where you expect everything to be. Most of the studies, well, these large studies sit within the confidence interval. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the study, whereas the smaller studies tend to have a bit too much variation and not be where you'd expect them to be. And you see that both in MC and ME. We've seen the funnel plot already. And this is the Galbraith plot, which also tells you a bit about which studies you might be a bit suspicious about. So this points out that Hedges, Bonn, and Yepsko, uh, 2006, they are questionable studies that don't lie in the expected uh, ranges. So a Z score is a normally normal distribution based score. So these lie in the extremes of the normal distribution about where you would expect different samples and different collections of data to uh, occur if the mean and the standard deviation are th those estimated from the meta-analysis. 